Welcome to, welcome to Calypso's showcase and certainly moving to higher heights is Denise Plummer, fresh from her successful trip to Denmark where she did us proud. And we're happy to have her on the set this evening as our special guest. Good evening and welcome, Denise. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alvin. Well, we're all anxiously waiting to hear about this trip to Denmark. We want to get the full story and tell us what went on. Well, what I can say, first of all, is it was the most exciting tour that I've had in my 10 years of Calypso. It was extremely rewarding, very nerve-wracking, and um, the experience that I gained is something I would carry to my grave with me. It was very reading wonderful. Are we reading about the large crowds that you're performing to? Give us an estimate of what size crowd you performed to. 90,000 people. Wow. <laughs> and uh, that is something I've only ever seen on television and um, movies where you see the big stars performing and you look at that audience and you say to yourself, good grief, what it must be like to stand on a stage. You must freeze in front of an audience like that. And um, I was not told the capacity of the crowd before I went onto the stage. And when I took that stage and I saw 90,000 people, um, the cast that I was performing along with, they were all superstars from all of America and England. 
um, and all over Europe. And to them, they're accustomed to that type of crowd. So there was I pretending, I'm accustomed to this every day of my life, you know, while having the worst bad stomach I've ever had. It was just scary. And at the same time, it gave you a sense of power that you knew to, that to overcome this, you just had to go out there and just make it happen. Well, you know what's interesting is that Denise was accompanied by white people from Denmark. And uh, we're going to give you a little piece of footage <laughs> so you get an idea. The footage is not of the very best quality, but I think it will, be, it will suffice to show you what Denise did for us in Denmark. Here's Denise in Denmark. <laughs>
showcase Denise Plamadia with this feeling nice, a tune which sort of launched her career in 1987, where things really started happening for her. Well, you'll remember the last time um, Denise was on showcase was way back in 1991, September at that, almost four years ago. And her career has really blossomed since then. And we want to talk a little bit about what has happened over the last three and a half years with your career. And I remember Higher Heights and then the tune Fire. Tell me about that side of Denise, the party side of Denise. Uh, the party side of Denise, I think, was always there um, waiting to explode. And um, the first four years of my life, or first three years of my life, I was concentrating on Boogsy's music, which was pan music. And um, I hadn't the opportunity to explore the actual party side of it, the breakaway part of it. And then eventually I started writing my own songs. And I started concentrating on the serious songs more than the, the party music. And then I realized that the party songs are what gave you the work for the next 12 months of the year. Um, after Carnival was over, I saw a lot of Calypsonians not being able to work after Carnival, because if you didn't have a party hit, you didn't get all the carnivals throughout the world for the next 12 months. So I started concentrating on that. I eventually started buying songs from professional party writers, um, like Preacher and these guys. Mm -hmm. And the party music just took me you know, as far as I really wanted to go. So to me, it's almost as important as the serious message that I feel that I must give every year. The party music has become very important to me also, because you must sell the soca and you must sell the Calypso. Who composed Fire? Um, I did. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. A very, very nice composition, if I may say so. Thank well, let's, let's look at uh, Denise in all her glory doing the song Fire. So come people free of yourself.
Dennis Plummer doing a special version of Stalin's 
Martin Luther King. And I, I must ask you, where you got the inspiration to do that version? What a powerful set of lyrics. I've, I've heard Stalin do that song so many times because we've done so much work together, we've fought together, we've performed all over the world. And every time I heard him do Martin Luther King, I used to get goosebumps all over me. And I said, what a shame that the world cannot hear the lyrics to this song. What a difference it would make you know, to all the problems that are out there in this world. And every day America has a Martin Luther King Day, and, and I just wish Stalin's song could be played all day on American radio. And uh, we had the opportunity to do a recording that was going international. And I said, if I took Stalin's song and did it in a ballad version that would be easily understood by Americans, I know it can reach them. And we got into the studio, and all the people who heard the song, they had nothing to do with Trinidad and Tobago, they, they said, what? beautiful lyrics and we went with it and I got a tape back to Stalin right away and he, he his eyes filled up with water and he said Dee thank you very much for what you have done because it, it it even showed him in a whole different light the power of his own song and I think your your ballad experience from growing up and your music training must have helped <laughs> it and I think um, it's going to be very interesting <laughs> to the public now to see a little bit of you singing when you're not around, in the days when you were not oh, singing Alvin, Calypso. No, you didn't do that. To and me. I'll follow it up with For Loving. I won't show them too much of you in those days. But oh I'm sure God. you'll enjoy this one, viewers. When you're not around, a ballad sung by Denise Plummer <laughs> in her early days and For Loving. You're wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Your war was in vain, your pain 
responsibility of the Caribbean, the dream of all the rock and the land. Send the people down to Pantalan land, send them down to the Caribbean and go to Condone the behavior of the young daughters. And so baby daughters become baby mothers. Explain to them that childbearing is an adult skill. Life today is no jack and chill. Responsibility go along with pregnancy. Aids go hand in hand with promiscuity. Ask yourself, is my child going to be in trouble? A criminal, a druggie, or just a vagrant? The answer lies in the hands of every parent. Because you see, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. It's calling all parents. I want any of you to tell me what is the signal for sexual activity? Is it hair growth, voice change, chest growth? Come on, man, you have a say. Give them direction every day on TV. I sick of seeing little, little boys robbing and killing. And when they turn out bad, the parents just say, you make your child, you don't make their mind that way. Make some rules, I say, spend some time with them every day. You have the power to say. I hear a big maxi taxi driver My name a lady, 15 year old daughter He buys she books, she clothes, they cling like a magnet After school they smoking cigarettes When she reach home late instead of scolding her The mother asking how much money he gave you I ask myself, what the hell is really happening? What values we parents really teaching? Make some noise, let them know it's books before boys. It's up to you, the hand that rocks the cradle. Rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle. Rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle. Rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle. Rules the world. Our special guest tonight, Dennis plumber singing the hand that rocks the, cr the cradle the semi-finals at Skinner Park 1994. Another one of your compositions? Yes. <laughs> How important is it for Calypsonians to sing songs like these, these type of message songs? It's very, very important because even though a Calypsonian will tell you if I don't have a party song, I can't eat, they, I, I believe that they also have to realize that they have a responsibility to their country, to the children of the country and the people of the country. And um, it's important to have something constructive to offer that can help so many situations we have here. Because as I tell everyone when I travel internationally, that Calypsonians are looked upon as prophets, as teachers, anything that comes out of their mouth. The children look at them and say that's the gospel truth. So we have to be so careful with what we say. And how we say it. How we say it, the power that we have within us to control the minds of other people and having that special gift, that special power, it's important to make a difference by saying something important. And also we have to remember that the younger ones coming up must have an archive in which to go 
into and to look for something that has passed. If we only concentrate on party songs, there's no archive, there's nothing yeah. for the younger ones. These are the ones. type of songs that will survive. Yes, and um, you know, so you must keep that in mind. Sing something for the archives, for the future generation, mm -hmm. and also enjoy your party songs. Well, coming to the party songs, the other tune, Tempo, that you sang on that <laughs> day. Tell us a little bit about that. Tempo, um, well, it's, it's exactly what it says. Um, this was a song I got from Preacher. A preacher wrote this song for me, and he said, this is you actually had it holding for someone else. And, and he said, um, I said, Preacher, I need a song. He said, OK, I have a song here, and it's, it's really you, so I'll give it to you. So I, I don't know who lost out on that song and how much trouble I'm in, but I really in, enjoyed it very, very much. And um, Preacher is also writing another song for me again for next we'll year. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But <laughs> you know, so the fire in it, Preacher's mm. in it, my energy is in it, and I really enjoy doing tempo. Well, let's, let's, let's look at tempo now, Denny's plumber style. Any final words? Well, I'd just like to thank everyone this year and last year has been really busy for me. My son was born last year, my second son. I had so much support from the people of Trinidad and Tobago all through the 10 years of my career in Calypso. Um, my first son, Jesse, who is nine years old, he's asked me to please say something about him. Jess, I love you. My adoring husband who is so supportive and everyone who's given me so much love and uh, support. And um, I did it without drugs. I'm a living example of getting somewhere without substance abuse. To all the young people out there, thank you. Watch me and don't do it.
Thank you very much for coming on the program. We go out with your 1995 performances, Your Woman and Celebration to Lara. A woman is born with a desire to please a man, to bear his children, and to mind them the best she can. When she had to take clothes, it's kick and cough and cut with knife. Oh Lord, heaven knows that man don't deserve a wife. No son, nowhere to run, no one to mind she and these children. They are forced to stay in a world of constant degradation.